Welcome to a brand new podcast. This, unfortunately, doesn't have a name yet, but we will get to this later in the episode. My name is Daryl Selby. I am currently ranked 17 in the world at squash. Um, I've been as high as number nine, believe it or not. And I was an ex-British champion, which was in 2011. Um, Just giving you some credentials. I mean, I sound like a big head there, but I'm just giving you my facts and figures. I'm joined by Mr Cameron Pilly, who is from Australia, a land very far down under. Um, His current ranking is number 19, but his highest ranking is number 11, which is just outside the top 10 players in the world, but we'll get back to that at another point. Um, He is a double Commonwealth gold medalist, which is very impressive. And um, yeah, he's joining me today. Hello, Cameron. Hi, Daryl. Um, so this podcast is going to be um, primarily talking about squash, um, talking about the pro tour, talking about amateurs, talking about the game in general, how we can improve it, um, thoughts on all sorts of topics, um, and yeah, just a general a general chat. Occasionally talking about other sports. I guess Olympic chat will come up, which will bring in other sports. Um, We've written down a couple of rough topics for today. Um, Obviously, they will be discussed. Um, But I thought I'd start by asking you how your Christmas and New Year was. Very good, thank you. Good. Yeah. It's been a good good few weeks over the Christmas break. Managed to have some downtime and some uptime training on court and keeping busy with the, the little one, the new addition to the family. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. and and likewise, number three for you. Thank you, yeah, number three, a little baby girl, Isla, which was now 10 weeks ago, joining my two boys, Noah and Harrison. Um, for you, number one, Carla. Number one, number one, two behind you, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a shock to the system, isn't it, number one? I can tell by the bags under your eyes, mate, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's a whole new world, it's a fantastic world, but um, I'm sure at some point uh, in another episode, maybe we can discuss, you know, how how that affects us as professional athletes, like how having kids affects you as a professional athlete, because I'm sure it happens to a lot of different um, athletes, men and women in, in both sports. And obviously, again, that is probably, you know, affects women different, differently to men in terms of having a kid. Obviously, it's a lot more traumatic, a lot more um, stress on the body. And I wonder how that, you know, would affect um, female athletes as well as, you know, we moan about having a lack of sleep, but I'm sure their their job is a lot more difficult than ours. <laughs> well, <Wow, I mean, laughs> wow, well, come on. I know I saw a picture of you actually after after Lena had given oh. given birth with there's a lovely picture of um Lena holding your little daughter Carla and in the background you were in bed in oh, the background was, <laughs> you had your own bed in the background just nice little wave. I was in bed, headphones on mate. <laughs> I was I was shattered. <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> but um but yeah, no, it's um it's it's an interesting one because we have um, TOC, which is the Tournament of Champions, one of our World Series events this this week in in New York. Here we are in in a New York hotel room doing our first our first pilot. But um, it's an interesting one because it's a mid season break. You know, we um, we have four or five weeks of of not really having any competitive squash, and therefore it's just a bit of downtime, training time. Um, and so it's interesting. I'm sure it's interesting for people listening to to see what you would have got up to in terms of training or how you would have managed that type of thing. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting one. Um, You know, the World Champs, which finished in Manchester, you know, mid-December. So it's a tough one where you want to get some downtime, but you also need to keep the body ticking over because, you know, Tournament of Champions starts now. So, you know, for me, I made sure I I did get my downtime over Christmas. Um, had, Had a few days off, sort of did a lot of family stuff, but... You know, then it was sort of straight back in the gym and on the court just to, to make sure the body's going to be ready for this. And um, I'm guessing you were pretty similar with that kind of kind of yeah, setup, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I mean, how many days off? How many days off did you have? I would say in total, I probably had. I probably had close to a week. Yeah. Um, not in a row, but just you know, I might do something, have a 
have a full day off. I might yep. train for a day, have another day off, depending on what family things I wanted to do yeah. um, and what players were around to train with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was... I didn't probably do as much training as I as I would want, but, um, you know, I'm at an age now where I'm trying to look after my body as best I can. I, know I feel you. I, I know I've got a tough tough second half of the season coming up, so um, that's always in the back of my mind to keep as, as fresh as possible. Um, obviously, we're both building, I guess, towards the Commonwealth Games through a number of very, you know, other very important tournaments before that. Um, but I know that's sort of in the back of my mind. I'm sure it's in the back of your mind. Mm, like, for sure. You know, it's been... When it's when it's something that's a four-year gap, then that that build-up is a lot, uh, a lot greater, I guess, than something that occurs every year. Or, you know, we had the World Team Championships in, in November, um, and that was obviously a bi... It's a biannual event. Unfortunately, that hadn't happened for four years. So I felt the build-up of that as well. I felt like it was a new thing and, and something very exciting. So uh, the Commonwealth Games is always... A fantastic event. I mean, I love being a part of it for for a number of reasons, but the fact you're in a multi sport event, you know, it really does feel like our uh, Olympic Games. Um, and I enjoy being in a village, you know, a sports village full of other athletes, um, chatting to other athletes, exchanging ideas, exchanging training tips, exchanging, you know, different, just comes different conversations and and. Um, you know, squash being a part of, of such a big event is, is great. And Glasgow is a great example of, um, you know, a million people watch the, the singles final. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Glasgow is a great example of, of new people finding out what squash was and actually enjoying it for what it was. And I think it was great that the doubles was so so well enjoyed because of the problems that it may had in the past of, of being notoriously boring. Um, mm. But this this time I thought it was, it was, it was way better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent with you. I think, yeah, one of the best things which you touched on was being in the athletes' village, you know, being there with, well, in my case, the whole Australian team, all the other athletes, you know, athletes that you've seen on TV before, you've seen race or compete, um, and being there, rubbing shoulders with them, being in the food hall with them, having a chat, um, getting to know a few of them. It's just, yeah. And like you said, every four years, it's just such a cool experience. Yeah. And then you sort of, you know, the adrenaline from those two weeks is is so high. You just you just want to kick on in in your national colours. Yeah. Um, and we don't get too many team events in squash, so it's it makes it extra special, I think. Definitely, yeah. Um, should be extra special for you being in Australia as well, I guess this time. Yeah, it's it's going to be an awesome event on the Gold Coast, Australia. <sighs> Australia, awesome. Gold Coast, even better. Um, it's. Yeah, and it's actually it's only two hours away from Yamba where I was born and raised, so can have a lot of family and friends there. And yeah, I think I think everyone who goes to watch watch you know spectators and the and everyone competing, it's going to be a pretty cool experience. Yeah, oh, I'm looking forward to it very much. Um, yeah, so on the agenda, we as I say, we got a rough list of topics, very rough list. But um, first up, we wanted to discuss the best of three versus best of five debate. I wanted to throw in the mix as well um, other scoring systems. Um, but I feel like this is quite a hot topic at the moment within squash. You know, there's there's a lot of talk um, over a number of different sports. You know, I sort of follow golf pretty closely and they, they tried uh, a golf sixes event, which was like a six hole tournament. So they played in teams um, and yeah, matches of six holes you know like mm. golf is one of the most traditional sports um you know for its uh positives and negatives obviously um going on to that you know women women not being allowed into clubs you know being negative types of uh press to do with that positive types obviously the history and tradition of certain tournaments but um for them for a sport like golf to sort of embrace a change a massive change like that um sort of signals signals to me that you know squash can we can we do more can we look at other things that might might bring us more in terms of um exposure in terms of people watching new people watching um and yeah let's let's sort of discuss the best of five versus best of three versus other scoring systems because we obviously play to 11 11 points at the moment point of rally um but is there a better way well that's the that's a big question yeah i think you know, like like you said, 
you know, if, if golf's brave enough to make that call to, to experiment with a few things, we know cricket's done it in the past where it's gone from five day matches to, to games over in three hours. Um, you know, I think it's, it's important that squash doesn't get left behind. I think it's important that they continue to experiment, test out some new rules, some new scoring things. Um, I think it's going to be a, I think it's a positive step in the right direction for just experimenting with it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you know, the Canary Wharf tournament coming up in in March, um, it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of um, media around it. I think because it's the first time it's it's happened in a in a PSA event, bar the World Series finals, and. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, and I think it's going to get some good coverage. Do you think it changes the essence of the sport? I mean, you've got the, the greats of you know Jonah Barrington and, and Jeff Hunt and, and players of that era who were... It was a, a type of um, survival of the fittest. It was who could be the last the longest on court. Um, obviously, technique and skill and, you know, everything played an important part in squash, but... The physical side of the game obviously was a lot more important in those days, and then it's obviously transitioned with the with the improvement in rackets and technology, and and the speed of the games increased through the Khan era and, and so on. Um, I mean, are we losing? My fear a little bit is are we losing the essence of squash, that physical side of it, or do you think that's just a different type of physical side? I, if I think the shorter we're going. Yeah, I think it's just a different type of physical side. You know, you look at, like you said, Jonah and Jeff Hunt back in the day, um, th- those types of fitness levels and what they needed to, to train for back then compared to now, completely different. Um, changes in training, equipment, um, you know, all those types of things. So I think if, you know, experimenting with best of three, it's like we see in the World Series finals in Dubai, it's, I think it's a real spectacle. I mean, I, I love watching it. It's intense. It's fast. It's... The, the skills and the essence of squash is still there. Yeah. If you play badly, you're going to lose. It's still You still need to play good squash. You can't just go in there and hit the ball hard and run around and, and hope you're going to win. Um, I, th- I think, you know, the essence of squash is still there, but, you know, it's th- there may be a, a sort of an area there where we can, you know, look to... Um, can't, can't think of the word right now, but just to... You know, just to experiment with like the other sports have. You, I don't think you're taking away the essence, but it's a, it's an area to really look at. Yeah, I mean, my my thoughts my thoughts on it is that we have to try different things. We have to experiment. I mean, squash a rally of squash is still going to be a rally. It's still going to be a point played. Um, you know, my my thoughts on it are. Can, can we go the other way? Is there is there something where we can have more crucial points to make it more exciting um, for people that are sports fans but that haven't necessarily found squash yet? Um, is, is, are the rallies at two or three or four or in, in the first or second game, are they, are they interesting for, for someone that you're trying to introduce to squash? I mean, I know there's a narrative to a lot of matches where, you know, if you're watching a whole match, you sort of follow it and and... It's interesting if you're going to watch the whole match, but a lot of the time nowadays people don't have that necessarily have that time, and they want to switch on and they want it to be interesting from from the word go. So, you know, can we can we have a tournament where we play to five points, where we play to seven points, but we play best of best of seven or best of nine or whatever it might be? Yeah, is there a place? For that, I mean, well, possibly. I, I, I think there is. I, th- I think, I think, yeah. if we, if you, if you don't try it, you never know, and the players will adapt to whatever they're given. Yeah, you know. Well, top... we saw that with the eleven scoring when we went from fifteen to eleven. Yeah, you know, everyone thought these games are going to be over so quick. Yeah, we're playing so many less points. The matches are almost identical. Yeah, you know, it's you're right. Play, players adapt, and I think in you know, it's like a society of instant gratification these days, where yeah. you want things to happen. Now you want mm-hmm. excitement. You want you want it to go go go. Yeah. Um, so I mean that yeah, there could be a place in, in sort of a you know a different format of squash to have these these crucial crucial sort of mini games throughout the match. Yeah. Um, 
I'm just trying to think of other examples. You know, you've just given a good one then from the 15 to 11 scoring. But for me, the most recent one that I think has provided a huge amount of uh, excitement and uh, joy is changing the ladies' tin from 19 inches to 17 inches to make the game more attacking. Yeah. And I remember having the conversations at the time and, and some of the girls were a little bit apprehensive about the shortness of the rallies possibly or the shortness of the matches because of the the lower tin. Um, and you look at it now and, I mean, I think the women's game has come on leaps and bounds in the last few years. It's, it's more attacking. Um and the rallies aren't shorter. The the matches aren't shorter. I mean, no. normally the best player wins, and that's yeah. that's squash. But um, but yeah, the 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 women's game at the moment is phenomenal for me, and um, you know, I'm really enjoying watching the matches. And 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 part of that is obviously, um, not necessarily having that dominant figure like Nicole was for such a long time. Um, you know, that's that that's the tough part because you've got such a great athlete like Nicole. Mm. Um, who dominated the sport and it's an unbelievable story in its, in its own right really it to do it for that long yeah. but it didn't make it as interesting because everyone was waiting for Nicole to win the tournament too good, too good too Nicole good. yeah <laughs> every time so um, I don't know how the other girls felt about rocking up and knowing that <laughs> Nicole was so dominant and not really necessarily you know believing you could, you could win but, um, but nowadays I think anyone really could win the, it is it is open it's so open yeah. and it's great because yeah. you know you come in this week at TOC and you look down the, the list of entrants for the for the girls and what you could have 10 yeah. names 10 names on that yeah. on the trophy yeah yeah. I mean you look in the top 10 um, even just the outside of the top 10 and literally any one of those those women can win that tournament yeah. so it creates a lot of interest and I think the low 10 like we've seen a few players really adapt to the low tin well and quickly. Yeah. And, you know, they've just sort of almost shocked some of the girls in, in how quickly they've adapted and, and used it to their advantage. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, the Egyptian girls. I think Sh- Shabini especially, um, Raneem, Goha, you know, in all that, in their, in their different ways, they've adapted to that low tin so quickly. Yeah. Um, Goha just with her power, just, just raw power. Um, hitting ball so low, so hard. Her kills are just ridiculous. Um, someone like Raneem, who, I mean, her her natural hitting ability and racket skills are, you know, almost second to none. Yeah. And Shabini's just insane. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think she's got, she's probably got in the top two best backhands on the, in the women's game. And I think she's got a better backhand than most of the men as well. <laughs> So, no offense yeah. to you boys out there, but um, you know, yeah. some of you got to pick your game up in the technique yeah, department. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not not challenging her to an alley game anytime <laughs> soon. Put it that way, but um, but yeah, there's there's it's great, and I'm obviously um just wanted to quickly touch on the fact that um being at TOC, Amanda's Amanda Sobey, who's been injured for for nearly a year, is uh making a sort of comeback this week, which for the American fans, you know, she's she's the highest ranked American player, um is is going to be a good thing hopefully she can uh she can play well and but it's just sort of nice to see see a player back that's been injured for, for you know a nearly a year and and not a nice injury either you know no. achilles injuries are, are yeah. horrible injuries joel obviously did did hers and, and did fantastic to come back and she looks stronger than stronger than ever now as well so yeah. there's um you know that's that's good incentive for amanda that she's you know can see joel um how well she's done since coming back from from the same injury. So yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so just you know, wanted to say good to see see her back because you never wish injury on any fellow professional squash player or no. any 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 fellow yeah. professional athlete. Um, so um, so yeah. So for this next part, I know you just touched on uh, the fact that Shabini has your favourite backhand in the game. Or in the she, women's game? She is one of, I'd say, the top top three backhands for me, men's and women's, okay. at, the, at the moment. Okay, so that sort of given us the idea of we want to create our ultimate player. So take different parts of different players' games, merge them together and produce one ultimate su- <laughs> super player. Super say, player. Superhero uh, player that... 
will be all conquering and world champion for 28 years. Um, <laughs> what, where do we start with where that? Where do we start? Well, I'm going to start at the top of the women's ranking list with Noel Shabini. Right now, again, yes. is she your favourite player by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. She, I just, I mean, don't get me wrong, she's got a very good forehand as well. She's world number one and won about a thousand world titles. Nor, nor if you're listening, you are Cameron's favourite player. She ain't. And, uh, I would say, you know, just the way she strikes her backhand, the way she lines up her backhand every time, it's it's the same swing, the, the same technique. Um, she's either, she can take it short very, very well. She can punch it short. She can punch it deep. She can take a full swing deep. It's, <laughs> she's I mean, got everything. Mate, if I played her, she'd probably chop me up. I've got no idea what she's doing. Um, Be a cross court. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would put Shabini... Like I mentioned before, Renim. Yeah. Um, I like Renim's technique on both sides. Um, I'd say for me, those those two, uh, I would probably put right up there. For backhand? For backhand. So, so this is your backhand for your ultimate player is either Norel Shabini or Renim. In the women's game. I thought we were doing men's and women's. Oh, hang on, hang on. Okay. I'm going to throw in a guy... Just to you know, just in case some of the guys don't really. Oh, like no, you, you can't. Th- we're we're going to take ages if we go. <laughs> got like five options for each player. Go on. Who's the other one? I'm going to throw in one more. Go on. You need to make a decision pretty quick, though. Okay, my backhand is Rami. Okay. Rami's backhand. Because it's so. I mean, you can't you can't teach it. It's very unique. It's very random. And very I effective. Know, I don't know where it's going. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got to pick one. Okay, if I had to choose one of those backhands for pure technique and just textbook to be able to teach it, to be able to do it, I'd probably say Shabini. Okay, yeah, good choice. Um, I am gonna go for there's a number of options here for me, but. I'm going to go for a recent one, and I'm going to go for Ali Farag's backhand. Decent choice. Um, he has obviously exploded onto the scene recently, but um, it's, it feels like he's been there forever, you know, in a weird in a weird way. But his backhand is very simple, and that's what I like about it. His, his racket's always up, always mm. up in the right position, always waiting for a volley, and he does one thing that I don't know how he does, and every time you hit it tight on the backhand and you glue it to the wall... Front backhand. How does he get it cross-court? How does he get it cross-court? I am not. Ali, if you're listening, um, we, we'd like to know how you do that. How does he get it cross-court? He, like, flicks it and I, I, I just... I still don't know... Well, it's, it's pure frame because... Yeah, but he knows where it's going. Yeah, but he's... He frames it on purpose. That's how basically skilled, cross-court. Yeah. Yeah. Pure frame, yeah. cross-court lob. Yeah. But apart from that part of it, that's the but just in general his his backhand uh, volley and his backhand drop and it all seems very natural and very easy so um, I'm gonna take Ali's backhand okay solid forehand oh. I'll go please he's a lefty Ryan Cuskelly not Ryan Cuskelly <laughs> um, sorry Cusk I thought you throw throw yeah. him in there mate he's straight first one you thought of wasn't it Cusk it was I can't think of any other lefties. Um, he doesn't play anymore, unfortunately. Oh, is he Egyptian? He is indeed. Has he won a few world titles? <laughs> yes, won four, yeah. <laughs> is it Mr yeah. Shabana? It is, yeah. So I'm going to go for Shabs' forehand. Um, I mean, I could go for just... I could just put Shabs in as for as it. my player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because... You can, you're allowed. Yeah, it would save a lot of time and discussion, <laughs> but I could just put him down as, as the ultimate player. But... Um, I'm going to take his forehand because it was silky smooth. Um, I like watching lefties. And he always got in a position where I, he could hit any shot. And I, you know, he, the way he held the ball, I, I literally had no idea where it was going. He could, yeah. he could hit it into any of the four corners. And until the last minute, I didn't know which corner that was going to be. So yeah. for me, um, I'm just going to go for Shabana. I'm not going to discuss anyone else. <laughs> You? I mean, to be honest, if we can take past players, yeah, 
I've, I'm adding past players in because I mean I, we I, should. Yeah, I, I'm probably with you on that. Um, I'd probably put Shabana's back end also in my top <laughs> my my big list of back ends that your I like. T- yeah. <laughs> in your top three, you squeezed him in like you've got eight <laughs> in the top three back ends. Um, yeah, probably probably for the same reasons you just mentioned. You know, when you're on court, you're playing him a- again, uh, kind of like Shabini's back end. It's the same swing for every shot. So Shabs's back end and forehand. It can go anywhere, yeah. so you, you you're on your toes because you don't know where it's, where it's going to go, and his control is second to none. Yeah. Okay. Done. Done. Forehand, backhand. Okay. What about forehands you don't like? No, no, we won't we won't touch on that, will we? Really? Are we no. going to go for that? No, no, we we can't slate people, can we? No, I don't think so. It's not fair. I mean, if viewers want to hear our views on that, just let us know. <laughs> I've got a few on the list. I've got a few in my top three, but. <laughs> I don't really feel comfortable sharing them. No, let's leave that. Let's leave that. Okay. Um, let's move on to more positive things and go for the physical side of the game. <clears throat> so, um, you want to do movement and fitness or are you going to go separate? Um, let's go Let's go pure movement. Okay. Would you like to go first? Or you want me to kick it off? Uh, no, I've got my man. Shoot. It's a man. Again, I'm, I'm He's being very male-dominated here. Um, but I'm going to go for Thierry Linku. Oh, left field. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can get any more stable on every shot, <laughs> basically. Um, he's... Yeah, he, he moved around the court. For me, like, perfect movement. Mm. Wasn't necessarily the fastest or it wasn't necessarily... Um, you know, like the way Paul moves or the way Greg moves, very, very explosive. It wasn't necessarily that, and it wasn't maybe the smoothest. It was very smooth, but mm. it just all round as an all round movement. Like to teach it, that would be that would be my choice. Yeah. Um, I just think that you know, similar to, I actually think the way Camille moves as well. I don't know if it's a French thing, but she, her movement in the women's game is some. You know, I really like that as well. She's always seems stable on every shot. Um, she's strong in her movement, but also um, smooth. A smooth. There's a smoothness to it as well, which I like, and a sort of a rhythm. Um, so, she would be definitely second on my on my movement list. But I'm gonna go for Thierry. Yeah, that's um, that's a pretty good call. I would say. I mean, again, I'm I'm not thinking past players for some reason. I'm just thinking current crop but he'd be up there I'd put Greg up there um, again it's it is that French movement of open stance um, dominant but it's very it's very powerful as we know it's it's so explosive so powerful um, you know it, sometimes it may because he's so powerful it may not look the smoothest but you know I think he's I think he's just so powerful and he's just the way he's done that movement he's done since he was 13, 14 years old so um, he could tell you how many steps it'd take him to get to any ball on court and how many steps it'd take to get back to the tee yeah. it's it's pretty impressive um, yeah the Frenchies Frenchies can move can't they? Greg Marsh Greg Marsh another smooth move Castagnon yeah I've been on the end of that he can move pretty quick if he wants yeah. to <laughs> um, but yeah those those Frenchies move well, very well. Um, okay, we've got our our movement. Movement. Um, are we going to look at the mental side? Mental side, yeah. Who's mentally strong? I've got mine. Done. I've got it. Okay. And I'm going to go not current player. Okay. Past. Yeah. Do you want to have a stab in Can the Can I guess? Yep. Pete Nichol. No. Oh, Who? Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Um, very... Very mentally strong. Palmer? Correct. Oh, you're so Aussie biased. Yeah. <laughs> He's, ha- having played with him in the doubles as well and just, you know, speaking speaking between points and getting his point of view and his perspective on what's what's happening in the game, um, you know, as you're playing it, um, speaking to him between games, him coaching me uh, between a, you know, in a singles match, Doing some training with him, and also the world titles and British British titles that he's won from being match ball down. Yeah. Um, I think he's won most of his 
big, big titles, the British and the world, being match ball down at some stage of the match. Yeah. Um, wish to come back from that time and time again is is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's, that's a good one. I mean, I've got a lot of respect for, for Dave and he's, yeah, you know, one of the... One of the men I would think to straight away uh, when you're saying about being mentally strong and, and mm. physically strong mm. on, on court. Um, yeah, good choice. Yep. Um, Who are you going with? A, a Nicole. Either, oh. either, a, <laughs> either a Peter Nicole or a Nicole David. Either or. Yeah. Um, oh, it's tough. I think Nicole David, I mean, nine years as number one and... To handle it the way she did, and to perform like she did, all the time, that way, yeah, mentally must have been very difficult. But she she did it in in such a an amazing way because she was you know a great ambassador. She was being a great ambassador for the game at the same time as as dominating. And I mean, I don't know how it would feel being in that position to be number one. For for that long for would that you long. would you yeah. i don't know whether i'd naturally feel like i wanted someone else to win a bit yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean like yeah, i mean um do, do or are you that ruthless that you're just i want to win everything all the time um that's a good question maybe uh, we can get her on here one day and yeah ask her. well it'd be, it'd be interesting to know um so and she did it so gracefully and and so humbly as well. But that's that that's that's the part of it to be, you know, it's like a Federer type thing where you can be the the best but still be incredibly yeah, as you say, gracious and humble and respectful to everyone that you play. Mm. And you gain so many fans around the world for for that and I I'm, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for Nicole. I think I've just bigged her up enough, but p- yep. f- for me Peter Nicole as well as as watching him when I was younger, I watched him train I trained uh, with Neil Harvey like at the same time and um, played against him once. Um, the only person to double bagel me. You're kidding. In PSA. Uh, no. What no. tournament and how old were you? I was a professional. Oh. I was, I was uh, Hungarian Open. Hungarian Open? Hungarian Open. $40,000 tournament. He was number one seed. I, he wasn't number one at the time. He was just... He was probably four or five in the world. He was number one seed. And I managed to make the quarterfinals from qualifying. Nice. Which was very nice at the time. It jumped me up a fair few ranking spots. But, um, yeah, bit nervous. Yeah. 11 love. Thanks for coming. First game. Yeah. 9-7 up in the second. Oh. String broke. Hit a winner. <laughs> String broke. Hit the tin. No. Like he was out of position. Yeah. To go 10-7 up to win the game. Didn't win another point. <laughs> <laughs> when I've got my new racket, I might as well play it. Might as well have played with it the other way around. You're kidding. Yeah, 11 9, lost that game, and then 11 love in the third. So 11 love, 11 9, 11 love. I mean, you turned it around well after the first game. Great comeback. That's but a then, great turnaround. Thanks, yeah. And then turned it back around again. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, that's, that's my, that's my uh, one Peter Nickel uh, experience. Was that one of your first years on tour? Yeah, I think maybe my second second year on tour. Second year. So yeah. managed to overlap a little bit. Um, yep. Must but, have been a good experience though. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah amazing experience. Just mm. wish there was more people watching. It was a weird tournament. but um, Who, Who'd was, you beat in the first round to make quarters? I uh, beat Shahid Zaman, Shahid Zaman, who was a top 16 player at Can that I time. Can I say, great striker of the ball. What? I don't know if we can include this <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in our ultimate player, but... If you if I was going to choose one player to intimidate my opponent purely by how well they hit the ball in the knock up, <laughs> I would choose Shahid or Manzo, but yeah. Shahid because yeah. he without doubt won every single knock up that oh. he was participating in. Yeah. His ball striking was a joke, oh, absolute joke. Um, I think his movement would have been near the bottom of, of the list <laughs> of my list, but his ball striking was was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so yes, where were we? Oh, mental, yeah. So I'm going for Nicole David. Okay. Oh, sorry, that was a, that was a tangent, but it was a it was a, it may be an right. interesting it's tangent. All good. Um, okay. So yeah, we have we have almost our ultimate yep. player. Are there any any other categories that you would like to um, put out there? Do yeah. we want 
pure speed or are we sort of, you know, in the movement category? Is that sort of covered it or do we want... Um, or as, as a mover, they, they're going to get to a lot of balls if they're a good mover. Or do we want yeah. court awareness? I don't know. Court awareness? Act, actual squash player. Yeah. Like constructing yeah. rallies, working things squash out. Squash player. Pure squash player. <clears throat> court okay. awareness. Yeah. Cool. I'm, 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 I'm good for that. Okay. Um, I want to be biased. I've got a few that spring to mind. <laughs> um, Shoot. They're actually both English. Okay. Well, they're all English. I'll accept it. Okay, thanks. Just um, one time. I'm going to go for Nick. Matthew. Yep. Um, and Laura. Okay. Masaro. I think their, their court awareness and appreciation of of which is the best shot to hit at that particular time is yeah that's who i'd choose yeah, yeah. um laura in the in the women's game i think she she picks the right shot a lot of the time i think her shot selection is is definitely one of her strengths mm. and and her awareness of her opponent and where they are and yeah. how she can maneuver situations where the space is created mm. i think she um she's very good at that and then nick for me in the men's is has been phenomenally good yeah. I mean, amongst other things that he's good at, but that yeah. that's that's one that sticks sticks in my mind when I play against him. Is that I find he he picks the right shot yeah. at the right time. You know, if it's the lob, if he's under pressure, he hits the lob, and mm. it's the right shot. And as an opponent, I'm thinking, don't hit that shot, and he hits it. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. I can vouch for that. Having yeah played him as well, and you just you know if he hits, hit if he hits that certain shot, you, you could be in trouble. Yeah, and he picks it over and over again. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty, pretty good picks there. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with... I've just... Why are you on, you're on the laptop? Is someone feeding you these answers? No, nah, mate, I'm just... Brain? I need to go through the rankings just to get my choices down pat. I so, don't even need that. Just so, think about it. All right, the two that have come to mind. Could be left field picks here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Men's game. Yeah. Purely, purely for his street wiseness on court. Yeah. Marwan. Yep, good pick. Very streetwise, can somehow win points that you just don't expect him to win. Yep. Um, picks the right shot most of the time, does it very well, um, and just yeah, you just you just know he's going to keep keep winning these. I'd call them sneaky points. He just bloody wins them somehow. Marwan, you annoy me, but you really win those points well. <laughs> And Fair enough. I agree. Yeah, he does I mean, do it very well. Yeah. Um, and, and from such a young age, um, yeah. I think it's just really good squash awareness and, and just very streetwise on court. Yeah, he's a very smart squash player. Very. Yeah. Um, women's game, I'm actually going to go with Tesney. Tesney yeah. Evans. Um, Tez is, I think she's at an all-time high of number 12 in the world. Wow. And just watching her play and, you know, she's... She just reads the game very well. Um, and because she reads it so well, she, she moves very smoothly around the court. Yeah, she does read it exceptionally well. Yeah. Um, and I, I, just think, I just think that's a huge part of her game. I think that's, that's a part that, you know, her, her squash awareness and her reading of the game has enabled her to lift up to, you know, number 12 in the world. Um, and that'll probably take her a little bit higher as well. Um, so I'd go with um, Marwan and Tesney. Okay. What? Mm. You got to choose one. Oh, oh yeah, one. All right, let's let's go with Tez. Yeah, yeah. Seeing as you've just done your research, you yep. know she's jumped up. To I've just. Was uh, that her career high? I'm, I'm don't, don't Google it, mate. Oh, I'm going to go with yes, and now I'm going to Google it. <laughs> it is, and it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, all over it. <laughs> and she's a character old player. Good on you, Tez. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Well, I thought we weren't going to bring up any. Oh, quick, quick shout out. <laughs> All right, Black Knight. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> we have our ultimate squash player. There's no other categories I can think of. No. I'm sure everyone who's listening, all eight of you, have um, <laughs> have I mean, some different. Mean, have, yeah, I know. Have some different opinions. Well, seven of them in Australia. Yeah. Um, I'm sure everyone's got different opinions, and mm. there is no right or wrong answers uh, to this question. But you know, that is just a bit of fun trying to create. Um, our ultimate squash player. OK, 
Okay, in the last part of the show, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. And this is a little section called Bobby's Quiz. Bobby's Quiz. Bobby's like Quiz. Well, this is for the pilot anyway. We, this might change this section. But Good name. Do you like it? Quite, I like it. Quite creative. Very original. Thank you. Um, so, Bobby's Quiz today is all about sports people's names. So, I'm going to give... You, Cameron, two options. No, I'm not. I'm going to give you one option. I'm going to give you someone's name. Now, they're either going to be a sports person or a normal human being. Mm. You have to okay. decide. Okay, you'll give me the name. Yeah. I say whether they're a, a sports person. Yeah. Or normal or human just a, being. No, you say a normal. Citizen. No, no. <laughs> I want you to say normal human being. Okay. Because normal human sports being. people are not normal. Um, okay, the first one. Do I do I tell you what sport they might be involved in? If By all means. Okay. By all means. Because I reckon I'll be good at this. Okay. The first one, his name is Woody Held. <laughs> Woody Held. I'm going to say he's a golfer. You're going sportsman. Sportsman. Golf. You're right, sportsman. Oh, yes. You're Wrong, wrong sport. What sport? Baseball. Ah, Woody. I bet Sorry. he played a decent golf game. <laughs> so, I'm sure he did, yeah. So, we're going to do seven. Okay. Seven so names. technically I'm one from one. Got the score. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, got the... You can have a bonus, actually, you can have a bonus point if you get the right sport. Okay. So, technically you can get 14 points. No, no, actually technically you can't, because they're, they're not all sports people. <laughs> Some of them are normal human beings. Normal human beings. Um, the next one. Mike Litoris. <laughs> Can you pronounce that again, please? Mike, as in Michael, Litoris. Don't are, these say, real, are these real names? Don't say it quickly. There's a picture of him just here. Um, normal human being. He is a normal human being. Oh, thank being. you. He is a, he's a homeowner. A homeowner. Oh, <laughs> That's how he's introduced on the internet. He's a homeowner. Um, the next one is Misty Hyman. <laughs> These are amazing. M I S T Y Misty Hyman. H Y M A N. Hi man. Let's go with sportsman. Sportswoman. Or sportswoman. You're correct. Oh, three from three. Three from three. Uh, sport, sport. Yeah. You'll do well if you get this. Or, Decathlon. I mean... <laughs> is it a sport? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a sport for men only. Is it? Yeah. Did you not know that? No. Nah. Oh, my word. <laughs> I want to teach you so many things on these podcasts. Oh, this is a very educational podcast. It is. Decathlon for men. Ten sports. Women's? Do you know the women's version? No. Heptathlon. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day. That's uh, this is. I'm really enjoying this podcast. <laughs> um, no, she's not a heptathlete. What? What is she? She is a swimmer. Ah, Misty. Misty. Misty the swimmer. Misty the swimmer. Um, we are gonna go for. <laughs> there's a there's a few brilliant names. Uh, Jurassic. Park. <laughs> that's a piss take. That's not a name. Is that a name? That's someone's name. Jurassic. Yeah. Oh, I'm Jurassic Park. Yeah, Korean. He's Korean. <laughs> oh, he is. <laughs> Jurassic Park. Yep. I no say he, him. I'm assuming it's a he. But... <laughs> normal human being. <laughs> yes, he is a normal yes. human being. Jurassic. Jurassic is a normal human being. Is he also, or she also, a homeowner? Uh, it doesn't actually say, mm. but they could well be. Um, the next one is Longer Longer. And what's the last name? <laughs> <laughs> the middle name is Longer. Longer Longer. Longer Longer. Longer Longer. L-O-N-G-E-R. Yep, times two. Longer Longer. Longer Longer. Where's she from? <laughs> no. Um, I'm I, gonna I say, say it's, L -O, it's actually L-O-N-G-A-R. A-R. Yep. 
I'm gonna say sports sportsman slash woman. Are you going for man or woman? I'm gonna say a sportswoman. Sportsman. Oh. But four out of four? Or is it five out of five? It's five out of five. Five out of five. You've got to be kidding me. I was trying to make and this quite odd. Yeah, you need, if you get the sport, actually, I mean, well, well known sport. Well, clearly not the heptathlon. Um, no, it's the <laughs> it would be decathlon. <laughs> Let's go with synchronized swimming. Did you see it? It's a man. What? Men don't do that. Well, they do, but it's probably not the best guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go random. Not synchronised swimmer. Where, where's, your th where's your thought process? <laughs> no. I'm going to give you another guess. That was okay, so poor. Okay, okay. All right. Um, longer, longer. I'm guessing from a country, I'm going to say from Sri Lanka. And I'm going to say is a hockey player. What? NBA. Uh, oh, NFL no. um, Field hockey Field hockey No mm. It's gone on too long <laughs> <laughs> It's gone on too long What's Longer what? longer uh, Basketball Oh Yeah Basketball So where are we at? Quite long Five out of five It's very Very Bad um... <laughs> two, two left <laughs> You've got two left I'm on course for a For a Bloody perfect re record You've here You've got two left Come on um, Okay You've got two left. The next one is... Can we have some sort of music or build-up to this or not? <laughs> okay. No. Fair hooker. Fair hooker. Yep. <clears throat> well, I'm going with she. Fair hooker would be a normal human being. Yes! Yes! He got one wrong. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm celebrating. I did not want you to get seven Damn out of seven it. in my quiz. Fair hooker. Fair hooker was a he. Rugby player. Hooker. NFL. Oh. NFL player. Hooker was a wide receiver in the late si in the late sixties. Fair. F A I R. Fair. His name was Fair. Yeah, he's a very fair guy. Mm. Um, fair hooker. Okay. Um, Damn it. So that's. That, I'm happy about that. The last one is Uranius Johnson. <laughs> Uranius Johnson. Uranius Johnson. <clears throat> Sportsman. Basketballer. Oh! Please tell me. Um, I believe... No, he might be an NFL player. I can't tell from the photo. But... Yeah, you're right. Sportsman. Well, what do you think? Give us a look. That's Uranius there. <laughs> you can't, I mean, I don't know why we're talking about someone's photo That's on, right. on the we'll podcast. Just, but just got up on the laptop. Uranius. Uranius Johnson. But, um, yeah, I'll give you a bonus point for that. I reckon that's NFL. Position, WR, wide receiver. Yeah. Seven out of ten, mate. Could have got a few more of the sports left. Uh, a few more of the sports, but. Mm. Um, nice little segment, that. Do you like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to touch up on my weird name, Sportsman. Okay. Be interesting to, um, to get the feedback on that, mm. whether that was a good section or a bad section. Um, yeah, just sort of we'll write be, in, good or bad. We'll be putting out a few polls on this podcast too. Yeah. Get everyone's thoughts. Yeah, well, I think it's a good idea just because, you know, if we're going to chat about stuff, it'd be interesting to know whether people are enjoying what we're talking about or, or not. So that's, that's, uh, that's the end of of Bobby's quiz for week one. Cheers, Bobby. The last part of the show, which is to say goodbye. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing our first podcast. We don't actually have a name for it yet. Um, there's been a few ideas thrown about. Um, at breakfast this morning, we had Pistol and Bobby's squash extravaganza which got poo-pooed pretty quick because of the length of the name i mean i was struggling to say it then to be honest yeah. um lena had an idea which which i mean i thought was terrible but what was that one yeah she, she had a couple actually she had um uh four big squash balls talking 
which is, I mean, this is the level to, we're at. Yeah, this, I mean, this is where we're at, and squ squash your balls. Was, squ was, squash your balls. Yeah, I mean, mm. again, so need some help, really. Yeah, we need some help. We're not very creative. I mean, we we sort of we want to do more of these. We want to become like the the Jansher and Jahangir of the uh, of the squash exactly. podcast world. Um, I've actually just realised we haven't actually talked about Janshi or Jahangir. We haven't really the whole podcast, and and we've that's uh, and we've talked about the ultimate player. And how have we not met? We didn't mention him once. <laughs> ultimate player didn't mention him. To, to didn't that's, mention that's arguably the two greatest players of all time. That's a shocker. Um, okay, well, well, they do deserve their own little segment anyway. Don't yeah, they? I, I think I think that's true. I think that's actually very true. I mean. How I didn't mention Janshi's movement in in as one of the possibles is is beyond me because he's actually my favourite mover. So can I? Ch I think I'm oh, gonna change I'll that. I'll allow a change. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I'm gonna put Janshi as uh, as the best mover ever. Sorry, Thierry, but um, Janshi just pips you up for yeah, me. Yeah, Thierry's not gonna be happy there. Um, but yeah, I I think we can we can definitely talk about them in their own section uh, elsewhere. They definitely deserve that. So um. So yeah, apologies to those guys. I'm sure they're not listening, but <laughs> if if they ever are, then then um, yeah, accept our our humblest apologies mm. for for missing them out. Um, but yeah, so we we would love your feedback. We um, you know we've we've made this so that squash lovers can enjoy it. Also, sports lovers that have any remotest interest in squash um, can join in. But if you can leave us some feedback, I'm not actually sure where yet, but somewhere. Um, we're both on social media very actively. Um, Cameron is Campilly on Twitter and the same on Instagram. Uh, I'm Daryl Selby on Twitter, just my name, and I am Bobby the Dazzle on Instagram. Um, we're both on Facebook a little bit as well. So um, once we've got this podcast up and running and out to the big wide world, we'll try and engage in some feedback. You can let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, bits of the show that went well, bits that didn't go so well. Um, my quiz maybe was was um, this week a poor version of what I'm hoping it can eventually turn out to be, which is uh, like a super quiz. I thought it was a highlight, mate. I okay. thought it was a highlight. Okay, yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. I think you just liked it because you absolutely nailed it. I did well. Fair. I did well. Um, all feedback is good feedback all feedback is good feedback okay um, but for now we'll say goodbye uh, thanks for listening um, ciao until next time